All set for this qualifying final in front of a bumper crowd and two traditional rivals who are going to slug it out this afternoon for the right to play Central District next week. It's a game of great promise. The first possession is going to go to the diminutive uh, Tony Malakalis. He gives it back to Meade. His handball fires it back towards Geneva. Inside for the first entry, but Jerry Diantokia uh, does it very well to the far side of the ground. A great spectacle here at Football Park. Big crowd and a big, big game. McIntosh took Carter high. A little bit of shepherding off the ball inside half foot. Have a look at the back there for Daniels. Spoiled it forward. You think he hasn't got a task this afternoon with Hodges. And his first couple of attacks at the football have been OK. It's gone across the boundary line. And, Michael, I won't even ask you for your tip when North Norwood were playing Port Adelaide. <laughs> what about you, David? Well, uh, I've gone for the Red Legs today. I think uh, Port Adelaide are coming into form at the right time, but I just uh, think at the moment the Red Legs are cherry ripe. This is Fleming giving it away to Maynard. His form's been pretty special. Also, if you have a look through the Red Legs, uh, fellas, they've been very, very aggressive. Their defence has been miserly. This is Darcy. Around the corner he goes forward. Opportunity for Ball A, he's gathering it in, Maynard gives it off to Dan Toki, last year's best and fairest. Good work uh, taken out there by McCormick. The Red Legs go forward, an opportunity for North East. Couldn't take it at the front, at the back it was Little Fiachi. And he goes around the corner and short, but it's chopped off by Stephen Rowe. Maynard picking up Darren Smith. Rowe, and here is Maynard. He's going to have an impact on this game. There's so, nothing sure. And so is this man. And this man is Matthew Robber, number 15 for the legs. Both he and Maynard back from Crow's duties last week. The ball hugs the boundary line in front of Little Harvey, and it goes across. A minute into this qualifying final. And Lees is picking up Robin. Robin's playing at centre half forward. Ambrose has the job on Reed. It'll be a good contest. And McIntosh just sitting backward of the play has his usual ruck roving duties in a game where he equals the man sitting alongside us Michael Ash equals his record of 307 games for the Red Legs fairly what, auspicious day Mike what a tragedy isn't it no I think it's a no, it great is. celebration magnificent for Gary McIntosh he is Nord has been for quite some time and there's many more games left in that body yet I think there's only three players who have played uh, more than 300 games for the Red Legs Keith Thomas Gary McIntosh as well. Fine performance. This is Lees, the former Richmond recruit. Uh, played 110 games with the Tigers. Gives it off to North East. To Carter, touted as a Port Adelaide power player next year if they get in. So is this man, Anderson. They want him back from the Crows if they can. Anderson's form in the last couple of weeks has been pretty solid. Big fly primus. Couldn't take it. Fleming, named in the ABC uh, Football Plus Team of the Year at halfback. Gives it off. Out. Stolen away by Carter. A loose ball falls. Oh. Now the opportunity for crashing through was uh, Daniels. Did it pretty well off the ground. It's hit for Bullays. He can go off the ground. He goes towards the goals. It's hit the post. Well, the Port Adelaide Magpie Machine Rose has won. They thought it was a goal, and it would have been a ripper. And the ball off the deck from Bullays would have been a good start for the Magpies. Little kick to himself from Dan Tokia. Port Adelaide are away. One point only, but they're away. And Darren Smith on the up. Not quite taken down there by James. Comes across the top and again, not able to keep it in play. Number 25, Troy Clements. Fleming matched up with Waterhouse, which will be a very, very good contest. And I was just thinking, speaking of contest, that on the far side, Simon Cowan has had a pretty good year for the Red Legs, but he's going to get... A very critical examination this afternoon by Greg Anderson as Darren Smith took all the time in the world and ran into Primus, then didn't know where it was, and Big Matt did it beautifully. Worked his way back. One clean take like a hungry seagull. Got it towards Teeson. Now on the half-forward line, it goes across the line. So they just need, perhaps, Nord, even though we're at three and a half minutes, to get it inside the corridor. Going very wide. Not much opportunity when you go that far into that dead pocket. Robram will do the ruck work in the Norwood forward lines that will allow Primus to just play that kick behind. Mead charges at him. Robram wins the tap, but it falls down. Darcy over the top of it, tries to juggle it in, taken the ground, gets away a handball into space. It goes over the top of it. Harvey kicked off the ground by Jennifer. Now Fleming, he did that pretty well. Fleming in board, he comes to the big man in Primus. One of the favourites for the McGarry medal this year. And look at this, the tractor. Chris Prime at 60. The lead's on. 
and it goes short. And it's Reed. Couldn't control it. Three attacking moves by the Red Legs all into that pocket. So they really do have to take stock, give themselves more opportunity. And really bring it right out in front of those two big white ones. Just so great to see a big crowd in. Norwood and Port over the years have gone head to head so many times. 32 premierships for Port Adelaide, 26 for the Red Legs. Great culture in both camps. There's number nine, Anthony Darcy. Hugs the boundary line and Fleming happily sees it across the line. Waterhouse is going to have an impact. David Brown, well, he was named on interchange and is already into the game. Of course, there are three interchange players which I, for one, think is only going to help Port Adelaide, such as their depth, able to bring in someone like Brown and Rowan Smith. A great help. Good reflex. Primus got on the end of it. Not quite clean enough, though, from Rowe, and they'll get a free kick. Well, let's have a look at this. That is a very soft free kick. You've got to earn them. The Primus kick to Lees, who sinks the fist into it, and it goes across the line. Five and a half minutes in, and it's just one point in it. Interesting to note, Stephen, Port and Nord have met in finals 35 times, and the balance of that is that Nord has been victors 22 to Port 12 with one draw. Surprising. It is surprising. It's not just grand finals, of course, it's all finals, so Nord have done well. Another free kick. Stephen Rowe points at the goals and says to James Thiessen, just settle back, relax and have a good look at them there at the southern end. He's going to get 25 metres. I think that the thing there with Tyson was that... Well, I got a feeling that Malakilis was just arguing the point. Norrigan Darcy ran across the mark. Either way, he's got, got himself right down to the line, hasn't he? So James Tyson, a chance for the first. He reckons that Ambrose ran across the mark. It doesn't matter because the Red Legs are away at the six and a half minute mark of the first quarter. They all count in finals. And if you get them as easy as that, well, you can thank your lucky stars. In the end, Tyson, the free was there. Northeast just grabbing the Guernsey. Not sure exactly what the penalty was for. You don't miss those. Five points the margin in favour of the Red Legs. Port Adelaide have a point. The Red Legs have a goal. Primus wins it. It falls to Malakalis. He's taken high. That's a free. Browden got him. There'll be no beg your pardons in this one. Great attack on the ball. Quick play. Waterhouse. Handballs it away. Opportunity for me. Upended. Paul Ays goes hard at it. McIntosh is in the thick of things. We talk about favourites, uh, Michael, this year's McGarry. He's got to be one of them. Well up there, along with Kilpatrick and Rob West, I would think. Jimmy Wine has got to be an outside chance, doesn't he? Had plenty of the football. Ball lays. The kick was smothered. It ricochets out to Darcy. He's found plenty of the ball so far. Feeds it back to Wilson, running from half back around the corner to Geneva, the skipper. Oh, cleverly done. Slick movement. And the opportunity for the Magpies to go deep to Smith. Smith sits underneath it. He launches himself at it. Two hands. Maynard gathers it in. Gets it back to Daniels. Opportunity for the youngster to go. Oh, he's sandwiched. It falls to Brown. He gets clear. McIntosh got him. And it's a free kick. Too high. Macca ripped his head off. Umpire in good position. McIntosh far too high on the left of the shoulder. And... It's easy to say up here, but you make the tackles count. And that one wasn't good enough. So it gives Porter opportunity. Set shot for goal. David Brown, game 118. Plenty of experience now. As he bends it back, it's come around nicely. Brown's got it. The Magpies are in front. They lead by a point. A very vocal crowd in for this second game. A good crowd. And David Brown... Plenty of Crows experience, a good finals player. We'll be looking for a lot from him and his teammate from the Crows, Greg Anderson. So at the nine minute mark of the first term of the qualifying final, the Pies are in front. Plenty of calls for come on power when they ran out onto the ground, so they've got the hang of it pretty quickly, this Port bunch. 
Stephen Williams from 60 metres out plunders the goals again and Daniels well he's going to know he's played a game of football this afternoon ball goes through and it makes it two points the difference Tony Miller Kellis if they can't control him Nord they will be in strife he works hard and is very quick Gentokio goes short from fullback to Daniels one of the most improved players this year his form's been very solid a high point for the Norwood year Primer set himself at the back it's Mead short a couple of years ago by the Bears still with the Magpies Darcy goes to Anderson he missed it Harvey steals it away gives it off to Fleming another halfback flanker in the team of the year he goes to half forward where Robert the ball just didn't sit kindly for him Carter overran it opportunity for Groudon to go short and look at this Reed's under it well, he's kicked a swag full hasn't he in recent weeks bad mistake from Carter he really needed to get down bend the back and pick the ball up he took a swipe with the boot and he could be very hurtful So Ashley Reed, 27 goals in seven games for the Red Legs. Leans back on it. It's coming back, but not far enough. It's a point. So not a good start. The Red Legs 1-1. Port Adelaide 1-2. We're 10 and a half minutes. We're 11 and a bit minutes. Sam Spart not in. taking his spot for the Red Legs. A bit of a hamstring. Also dropping out of the side, Todd Davey. And Scott Robinson out of the listed Norwood players. As Ambrose brings it back into play, carried a good 55 to 60 metres. Malakellis is in the thick of things again. It's tough in there. Very tough in close. Kim Russell with the presence, though. Did it okay. Went from the side of the boot and could be lucky. It is. Let it. Reed. Right up there. Will take some marking down there. And that's a magnificent take by Darcy. Really flew at it and took it as clean as a whistle. Far side. Carter. Keen to make amends for a little error just a moment ago. Anderson. One step. And an awful kick. You just have to back yourself in. And Ashley Reed well, he is a good shot for goal. That first one, maybe not the confidence start he wanted, but he needed to have another crack at it. Now he had Tyson there alone, but the kick uh, was a rainmaker and it just let everyone get back under it. A bit like a gridiron uh, kick, if you like. This is Russell giving it back to Groden. To Tyson, oh, that's a good mark. He's a quality player, this guy. So is this man, the 25-year-old from Wyala. Browden to Reed oh. on the half volley. Oh, cleverly done around the corner row. Look at this. James was there, but uh, North East was the lone man for Port Adelaide. He thumps it forward now. Tyson gets a kick away. Into space it falls. And the opportunity for Port Adelaide through Fiachi. Reed gathered in, goes to ground, and the ball across the line. There's no beg your pardons out there. And the tractor just ran over a couple. You're going to have to earn every ball you get, particularly when these two clubs face each other. When a qualifying final. Boundary throwing. 45 metres around from that Norwood goal. They've had it down there for the last couple of moments. They'd like to get a score. Harvey got it back from Russell. Now within scoring range at the back is Tyson. Not quite. What's commonly called an area and it goes through at the 13 minute mark of the first term for a behind so it's tight and it's tough one two apiece this is one area where I think Roger Delaney will be sorely missed because every time he kicks out he will find a Port Adelaide player now you'll find that you may get 50% of the ball heading back in for another possibility of a shot at goal around the corner goes Cowan it hasn't worked has it Northeast chops it off drills it forward into space the kick however was pretty ordinary it was meant for Williams, but Fleming cut it off. Harvey cleverly done to Maynard. They're working it out pretty well, the Red Legs. Very slick at this stage. In fact, scores are locked away, but you'd think, with the way the ball's been belting around, that the Red Legs should be in front. Rowe, oh. well, it was two on one. It was no chance for him. The big men were back there. Ambrose marks, plays on quickly. In a solid fill-in uh, for Roger Delaney, out with a broken jaw. And Darcy finding plenty of the ball. Kick number six for him. He's had eight possessions. And Mead. Long, Maynard, oh well it's uh, Robin. Oh look at this, put Clements under all sorts of pressure. Cormac, former Carlton player, dashes off and delivers it long. Rowe sits at the front of the pack, at the back it was Fiachi, he just read it better. Carter uh, got through, around the corner with the left boot, but uh, didn't have much support. And Primus marks on the grandstand win. Big Matthew Primus, 
On a bit of a rap for the opposition ruckman just picking him up because he plays very much like Jim Steins does Primus. A bit like a follower. A good take by Carter. And northeast and between them and Lees. They work it out. Lees with some space on the far side. So too with space is Darren Smith being picked up by Maynard. Short pass. And running onto it will be West. Again, uh, one of the favourites for the McGarry Medal on ABC Sport on Tuesday night. Certainly one would imagine Port Adelaide's best chance. Yes, you'd have to uh, contend that. Geneva might pick up the odd vote or two. So too Malakalis, but I think you're right about West. He'd be their best this year. West, the man in question, gives it off to Stephen Williams. They've missed his drive for a lot of the year. Handballs it away, but it's holding the ball. He just had too long, said the umpire. And a kick to be taken by Russell, who I can share, has a very black eye, a left eye. So he's obviously caught one the last couple of weeks. Geneva to ball A's. 60 out and closing goes long to the point of the square. It's a wrestling match on Hodges. He's interfered with it. It's a free. He gets it. So the champion, Port Adelaide full forward, who returned only two weeks ago, gets a free directly in front from 15 metres. They'll make you pay Port Adelaide. The mark wasn't taken in defence by the red leg player. To Scott Hodges. Directly in front. Remember what he did to the Eagles in last year's grand final. He's a big game player, this bloke. And he gets his first. And I was just thinking the same thing. It seems like five minutes ago he was carving them up with five goals in the last turn of the last game of 1994. So he's an ominous sign up the front. Nor would make the early change. The tractor off. Jonathan Ross goes into the forward pocket and Paul Northeast will pick him up. Six points in it. Get the feeling that the game, even at the 16 and a half minute mark of this uh, first quarter, is going to go right down to the line this afternoon and into the early evening. James. A row turned his back on it, but still managed to get it to Fleming, to Groudon. He's a little touch of class, and he pops it up towards the goals, and it goes through for a behind. Not quite. An optical illusion, perhaps. No, it went through, Stephen. You're quite right. It has gone through. Yeah, you're right the first time. And in the meantime, I can tell you that David Brown is down, and they're calling for a stretcher in the middle of the ground. So that ball will be brought back for another kick in by Ambrose. But, gee, Brown's had some bad luck. We watched... Central play Port at Elizabeth midway through the season and Brown fractured a cheekbone. And now he looks to be in awful trouble with a leg injury. A body blow for the Magpies, Michael. Well, it is. They lost Hodges in that first round against Glenelg under lights and David Brown is a fine player. Not given the opportunities, in my opinion, with the Crows. Fabian Francis will replace him. This happened in that game a couple of weeks ago when Norwood played Port. Delaney was off. They were down to about 17 men at half time. Brown taking a bit of time to get on the stretcher. 18 minutes into this first term. This is one of the things that uh, teammates don't like to see. Now, you can go two ways. You can respond with aggression and go at the Norwood team, or you can focus on the ball. And uh, Port Adelaide, uh, one of the best in the business at focusing on the ball in 50-50 positions. They'll take you physically, sure. But this is where they just galvanise Port Adelaide, and it might just be the catalyst that really rips them into gear. Well, they're the best, no question at all, with regards to attacking the footy been the best for years hence the track record with premierships 32 premierships uh, undeniably no one comes close you hate to see this but one of the interesting things out of it is that with three interchange players they've added one to make it a team of 21 for the finals it's not quite so hurtful for Port Adelaide overall I'd hate to lose David Brown no doubt about it but they've still got two interchange up their sleeve and I think in this instance, so early in the game, we've got a quick demonstration of the value of three interchange players. Fair comment. Ambrose with the ball at fullback will bring it back for Port Adelaide. 
Now, Norwood play a zone defence, so Ambrose plays onto himself, and that's a good way to break up a zone because you just kick right over it, and he's lobbed that ball on the outer wing. West puts uh, in the back on prime, on primus correction, and the umpire was there. That's the benefit of three umpires, that one. Harvey sidesteps, delivers it forward. Reed thumped away by Ambrose. Groudon taken in a head high tackle, but he went down, by the way. Uh, and that's a harsh one because if you're going down and the arm slips, tough. Yeah. Exactly. Tough one to call, but the umpire was behind him, couldn't really see, and I would have thought assumed. Yep. Trevor Groudon from 50. Can make the distance, by the way. He's a lovely kick. This one's going to lob right on the line. Jonathan Ross was up. Kim Russell goes after it. Fiachi desperately thumps it forward. McIntosh is in the thick of things. Where else would you expect him? Shoots for goal. Well, perhaps, well, I think he did, but it's gone way over the other side. Robin needs to work hard for it with Lees. Get support from McCowan. Simon Cowan over the top, crashing in was Lees. Now, Robin over the top and he forces a bounce. Good contest, very intense. Not a good kick from Macca. I'm sure he had a shot for goal. Tried to bend it back. Underneath the scoreboard, indicating five points of difference in favour of the Pies. We have a bounce down. And emerging with the ball is the very flashy Greg Anderson towards half forward. This is just great, isn't it? The grass is cut beautifully, the springs in the air, and Port Adelaide are playing Norwood. And here is Darren Smith, a finalist specialist from 40 metres out. He's missed this one. Oh, and he'd be so disappointed. He had Fabian Francis over the top with the handball. Francis would have run into the open goal, and I think Smith was caught in two minds. You just have to, every time you get the ball, you have to do something with it. Because Port Adelaide will carve you up. Something constructive and positive, you mean. They work it out on the far side with Harvey and Clements. And finally, Stephen Rowe, who's been carrying an ankle injury throughout the year, but looks to be moving quite freely. Everybody left it for one another. McIntosh from Russell. And Macker, another favourite, perhaps the favourite for the McGarry medal on Tuesday night. Groudon, quick kick forward across the face of goals. Tyson, boundary lines there, James. You'll need to do something spectacular. Well, he did, but just didn't finish it off. Doesn't he move? Will of the wisp. Beautiful movement of the ball. Just have a look at this. Right on his hammer is Wilson. Just sidesteps. Knew the boundary line was there. Poor disposal in the end. This is northeast. Ungainly kicking style, but quite effective. Finds Lees at the centre half back position. Now, Port Adelaide players are fanning out. There's plenty of options for him. Fiachi comes back on the left foot. Our teammates are expecting it. Carter drifts down underneath it. One hand, he does that quite a bit, doesn't he? Goes after it with one hand. Maynard, good courage. That's a trademark. James to Rowe, back to James. Quality player, this kid. To half forward and out on the lead is Reed. Or Ross, it was. Russell taken to ground. Play on, said the umpire. Fiachi back to northeast. That kicking style again. This time it's a torpedo and Malakalis has got it. It's paid. Now he looked to play on, but he'd be told to go back and kick over the mark. Port defence under plenty of pressure, standing up pretty well, Nord just not to capitalise. Port Adelaide uh, have the fourth meanest defence in the competition, Norwood the second meanest. It's been pretty good for the Red Legs. Harvey to McIntosh. Now their midfield, uh, the Red Legs, are doing a fair job. Just missed Antokia on the fly. He would have been right in stride if he just got there. Carter at the back, two hands, that's better. And he marks it. Stephen Carter, half-back right. His distribution is all right. It finds Geneva. And they're going somewhat short at the moment. Port Adelaide, they're having the game broken up, or trying to break the game up, I should say, to Waterhouse. It's going to be a nice test for him as well today. Much heralded throughout the year. State game in his first year. The crunch time, though, according to Jack Cale, is your uh, ability to perform in finals. Good tackle. Turnover, half a chance now for Geneva. Quick kick, an old floater, a tough one to take, and one that's going to bounce any which way. Norwood, they work it out deep in the defensive zone. Maynard, he always finds the body to James, who similarly is very good on the distribution. Not quite though for Stephen Rowe on this occasion, and it goes across the line. Poor effort by Stephen Rowe, just waited for the ball to come to him, did not attack it, gave the opportunity for Melakellis to get to him. And you see the disappointment on his face. 
He was happy just to recover the ball and wrap it up, wasn't he? Which he did successfully. Primus over the top, Malakalis gathers it in. Harvey gathered Malakalis in. Now James, oh, oh clever handball. He got one high, but play on was the call as McIntosh spears it out in the direction of Russell. Just inside the line, he kept it there. Fiatsi brings it back, gives it to Lees. That was good work, George. And short on the fly is Borlase. Darcy gives him some support right on the line. Needs to drill it this time at Waterhouse. And he did. Off uh, the knee of McCormick. It's out of bounds on the full. Well, he said it was above the knee. You be the judge. No, nah, below the knee. Good, uh, good decision, umpire. Daniel stumps it down into the run of Williams around the corner. He's a specialist of these. He loves them. Swallows them. And this one, no exception. Stephen Williams gets his first. Port Adelaide's third. They're three goals three. Leading the Red Legs, one goal four. The veteran... 267th game Troy Clements has got his work cut out on Williams just read it beautifully over the back walk in goal so the port surge is underway can Norwood crash in a little harder themselves 3-3 plays 1-4 and with 30 seconds into time on bounce down Mead and Primus, who has an enormous advantage in height. Quick kick out of the centre. They still want to go on with it. The kick was by Borlase. Malakellis, the momentum and the push is with Port Adelaide. Stephen Williams kicked the last one in short. Where are the Norwood numbers? Rowe. The reflex is all right from them, but they're not making much headway. Free kick. And it's going to be taken by Fleming. Fleming comes to grandstand side where Daniels has made a break. His kick towards centre wing. Has a look at Tyson and gets him. Tyson inside. Nearly a trainer in the way. Quick kick forward. McCormack. James has done a couple of beautiful little things so far in this game. Swooping in and doing it well was Darcy. A number of possessions. Nine so far for him in this first term. Quick kick by Borlase up towards half forward. Waterhouse. Uh, for Lashy, as always, still gets it back towards Geneva. Left leg, where's the runner? Stephen Williams is going to be outrun, no doubt about that. Number 25 is Clements. Too much agility, too much pace on this occasion. He did it very well, didn't he? The high ball underneath it. Opportunity for Smith and Waterhouse. Going to ground. No free kick was Fleming against Geneva. D. Smith did it pretty well at the finish. Gave it off to Darcy. Has support from Geneva. Decides not to use him. Goes long and Alan leaves it. Hodges! Sandwich, but he got it. Beautiful lead. Darcy in the thick of things. Lovely lead by Hodges. This man can kick a football long and accurate. He has one. He'll have the breeze coming from right to left. He'll need to take the right post. When he plays at full forward, Port Adelaide just with a little more solid. Been a wonderful player. This time he's off to the left. It's a point. And he's disappointed. Port Adelaide 3 4, Norwood 1 4. Margin only two goals, and we're 28 minutes into the first turn. Port Adelaide just continue to make it happen where I think Norwood hope it happens. Kick in by Dan Tokyo. 12 points in it. McIntosh to Rowe. Plenty of experience there, plenty of importance too as the day goes on. Kick to half forward. They need to bounce back here, the red legs. Fiachi fumbled, couldn't take it to Carter. Still with enough poise, though. Stevens' kick comes to half back where Darcy's been damaging early. Ten possessions in the first term. If he keeps that up, he's in for a bumper day. Well done by Darren Smith to Malakellis. They've got a few spare. One in the middle and one on the flank. Waterhouse or West, take your choice, and West was the option. Half-back line for Port, absolutely carving up Nord's forward line. It's a good observation. Uh, they are bouncing out of there like a big rubber band, Port Adelaide. It's been their strength over the years. Greg Phillips, Michael Wakeland at centre-half back. And now Brian Lee's controlling it, but the runners are very important for them. Now, West fancies himself. In terms of this kick, I mean, what breeze there is he'll have as the interchange is made. Waterhouse comes off. And Rowan Smith comes on. It's a fairly handy interchange, isn't it? They 
we've got to give Rowan Smith a chance to get back to his position and hence the time that it's taking. Finally, the umpire calls time on. As West gets in close to the man on the mark, launches himself at it and misses in front of a very, very big crowd at Football Park. We're four and a half minutes into time on. And it's two straight goals the difference. He's kicked it 60 metres, Robbie West. Another one of those players in the Football Plus ABC Team of the Year and well-deserved spot. Dan Tonkey to the outer side. McCormick under it to Fabian Francis. Tries to bottle him up. Just let him go for that uh, quick moment. He ran out of play as he tried to dispatch the kick. So good pressure from Francis. And the ball will come back and be thrown in at half forward. Primus and Ruck and this uh, Waterhouse uh, just being attended to. Cut in the head. The blood rule forced him off the ground. So obviously he just might need a stitch or two and uh, bandage over the top just to keep the blood in. Stop it from uh, pilfering through. Rowe, good courage, dived at the ball. Anderson got him. And in doing so, Rowe's given away a free kick. He held it in too long. The umpire said, you dive on it, you pull it back in. You've got to get it out. That's the rule. That's exactly Fair enough. what happens. Yep. So the Anderson kick comes in, Fleming front position. He's been very solid at halfback this year. Terrific player for the Redlegs. Dan Tocchia waited for it. Williams nearly got him. Rowan oh. Smith did. He's given it away. Hodges, good work. Stephen Williams around the corner. Not far enough, and Maynard chopped it off right on the last line of defence. Did it pretty well. Gave it back to Fleming. There's three or four options, you know, out there, and James gets it. Half back. Now, Rowe runs through the midfield, but there's very little other movement. So, oh, look at this. Good running from Maynard. But the siren sounds. It's quarter time in this qualifying final, and it's Port Adelaide three goals, 5-23, leading the Redlegs one goal, 4-10. The margin at quarter time, 13 points, and all the action on ABC Sport. Start of the second the term as the Red Legs try to crawl back. They trail by 13 points at quarter time against the mind of Port Adelaide Magpies. Five for Swaffer. And Chambers, the umpires, doing a fair job in the first term. And you'll see at 13 points the margin. Tyson gathers it in, gives it up to Rowe. Rowe's been working pretty hard. Back to Tyson. Kick smothered. Now Rowe again. They're working it out pretty hard, but Port Adelaide have really attacked them hard. Wilson dived on top of the ball. He couldn't get it out. The umpire indicates he'll have a bounce. You've just joined us. Stephen Williams, Scott Hodges, and David Brown have goals for Port Adelaide while Tyson is the only goal scorer for the Red Legs. Robin playing at centre half forward, thumped it down, gave it to Rowe, then James, and the kick uh, was not a well-weighted kick at all. The target was Reed. Picked off by Lees, Ambrose, and Northeast. Didn't quite connect with the Sharon properly, so it rolled off the boot. West, Carter, the run and overlaps all right. Very impressive to Anderson. The drop punt is incisive as always. Francis, it seems, is on the ground. Side half forward, Darcy, a big first turn from him. What's happened? Someone's got a free kick from the red leg camp. It's going to be Dan Tokia, far side. Has a look at Clements. And James, was it? Far side, half back flank. 12 possessions for James. Maynard, middle of the ground. Malakellis, Primus. It's a fairly brave effort. From Malakellis to take on a man who's probably 18 inches taller. Stephen Williams was there giving him a hand too. Well, they'll have a go, Port Adelaide. Here's Anderson. It's going to be picked off once again, though. No would need to get something moving, Michael. Ross off and Irving going to a forward pocket for the Red Legs. So the third try of somebody up the front there. Obviously, it's an area of concern for Neil Craig. They tried Prime, they've tried Ross, and now Irving. Perhaps looking for a bit of extra mobility through half forward. 3 5 plays 1 4. Two minutes into the second term of the qualifying final. And a little bit of blood there. I imagine they're trying to conceal that. Darcy, just so that he can stay on the ground. Mead does battle with Primus to the advantage of Norwood. Quick kick forward again by James. Torpedo punts a beauty also inside half forward. 
Wilson. They need a goal. Tyson. Where's the reflex on the up? It comes to Harvey. The umpire waves his arm and calls play on, and Norwood get their second for the outing. Now the Magpies still with a seven-point break, 3-5 to 2-4, but that's much better work from the legs. Anthony Harvey, recruited from the Saints. He's a very good player for the Red Legs this year. A great give by Stephen Rowe earlier. Tyson, a good effort. Harvey gets his first. It's 3-5 to 2-4. The margin seven points in favour of the Magpies. We're three and a bit minutes into the second term. Harvey gathered it in. Stolen away by Malakalis. He almost got it out. Anderson got the kick away of sorts. The umpire Pfeiffer had already uh, blown the whistle. Clive Waterhouse has got the bandana on. He's come out with a new fashion look. Looks like an Indian. He had, of course, that uh, cut late in the... Uh, First term on the top of the head, went off on the blood rule and had a treat, and there he is, Indira Waterhouse. And this is West, got it from Geneva, and drills it forward. Look at this, Scotty Hodges, front position, one bite, didn't get the second. McCormick chopped him off. Good interception by McCormack, lovely work, and the young fella, number eight for the Red Legs, Daniel, has got a very big job today. Primus in ruck, thumps it forward. Fleming gathered it in, but it's uh, stolen away from him. Dantoki was taken high, and the umpire said no free kick. It's another bounce. Clements on Williams may be a bit of a problem. Williams' experience, Clements in the past has tended, when it gets tight, to panic a little bit. Yes, Williams has won, and uh, Clements has been a pretty fair player, though. He gives him plenty of run. There's the student, Stephen Williams handballs over the top of the ball. Ace. He's gathered in, couldn't get it away. The umpire said he had no opportunity. Good decision. And Port Adelaide just making the play out of the packs. They have runners, and Norwood seemed to be chasing a little bit. A dangerous spot for the Red Legs. 15 metres out. Primus used his considerable bolt, pushed a player out. The umpire was, I guess, loath to pay it just in the head of the square there. Here's Wilson on the far side. And they've found the boundary line. It's a wonderful crowd in a football park for the qualifying final. Earlier in the day, we saw North Adelaide get up over West Adelaide. And so the loser of this outing is going to have to front the Roosters in confident mood. And the winner of this one, of course, gets the right to challenge top place in the Central District. Primus lays it down. Rowe is in there. So too is James. Works his way through some heavy traffic. Probably a little unlucky not to get one in the back. I think he has. Guess that's what the free kick's for on the far side. I didn't see the umpire, but James has got the free kick. It goes from half back to half forward. Robin's got a big impact on this game to come yet, if Norwood to be successful. Maynard got it from Russell. Gives some ground. Tyson. 55 and closing very rapidly. Has a look at the northern end and misses. And six minutes into the second term. Well, it's tight. 3-5 plays 2-5. Both sides, when going forward, certainly move the ball beautifully. Port Adelaide, far side. Player gets run into out there by Tyson. It's going to be Michael Wilson. Can't charge the player when he's got a full frontal attack at the ball like that. Northeast. Over the top. To me, the pressure from Norwood and their forward line's much better. This is what they need to keep the heat on. It goes out the back. Fiaci shook the tackle, but not before he was over the boundary line. He's a specialist finals player, isn't he? So too, Geneva. They love it. Oh, they do. And uh, George, without his partner in crime, Delaney, they do work so well off each other. But without Roger there, George is still a very, very seasoned campaigner. James. And that is Roger James. His brother Brett, of course, plays with Collingwood now, a former Norwood player. Callis was on stream. James has had seven kicks, six handballs. He's found plenty of the ball so far in this match. Robber in front position, won the tap, got it down to McIntosh. He's claimed by Ginnifer. He got away a handball. The umpire said it was holding it, though. Allowed the advantage. And Darcy streams away with it. Maynard at the back, gets away a handball. Well, they're red hot, aren't they? 
He's taken high, the umpire said that's a free. So Maynard from half back. Now the question's asked, has he played his last game for the Crows or can he continue next year? He's been valuable in the last two games of the year anyway. That's a soft decision. Robin running for the ball, the guys behind him really just went with it. Robin was going to go forward anyway. Well, I suppose we don't mind as long as they're consistent, but uh, finals football is a tougher game, and generally we see the umpires let things like that go. Mead playing a kick behind play. The Ruckman marks it on the chest, plays on, goes short. This is Waterhouse, well down from half forward. Well, what does that look like on the top of his head? Handballs it away to Ambrose, who's run down from fullback. Around the corner he goes. That was one of the few options to Wilson, but it's come unstuck. Taken away out there. The opportunity for the Red Wings to go forward, but they just didn't do anything with it. Tyson gave it up. And in the finish, Brown couldn't keep it in, and Carter quite content to push it across That's the line. That's one thing Simon Cowan has to learn is that he's got to get rid of the ball quicker. He's got to expect to be tackled, and he doesn't. Right on interchange here at grandstand side of football park a boundary throwing umpires found perhaps another softy from the pack it goes to primus he gets it in turn to mccormack lees robin and as long as lees closes down robin nor are going to have some trouble through half forward he's got a free kick to michael wilson who's slotted in like hand in the glove into this very accomplished port adelaide side smith to borlays and Daisy Borlase is a long way out. No hope of scoring from there, but gets it to within 50. Do you think he couldn't get off the ground there, Tony Malakellis? Terrific mark. Great leap for the little bloke, isn't it? He's a dangerous player. And that is a good grab because he knew he had to go early because Russell was right on his hammer. And he did it beautifully. I'm sure what the umpire's all about there. Having a quiet word to both players, yeah, both just Kim get, Russell and Malakellis. Yeah, just getting them to settle it down. Let me settle it down. It's a qualifying final. They're allowed to play with some emotion. Up it goes towards the full forward line. Waterhouse. I think he's just about lost that bandana. The elastoplast bandana on top of Clive Waterhouse's head. Might have to shave his head and stick it on. It's containing. He's just rearranging it. Smith takes it from the air, but not before he got a push away. He won't like the treatment he's got from Primus well, Was that either. any different to the one that Primus did before? Different end of the ground, David. <laughs> well, let's say I don't mind as long as they're consistent. Far side. A big leap, an early leap. Not rewarded. James Oof. with another kick gets crunched on the far side. 14 possessions for James so far. They need a goal, Norwood. With that, they can bring themselves up to level with Port Adelaide. A very keen contest. Inside half forward, it goes towards Robin. He'd want to use the hands, but before he did that, he needed to take it. Couldn't do so. Port Adelaide swoop. And Norwood, conversely, turn it over. Here's Tyson. 35 metres out, would be pinpoint from there, but Northeast has got it on the last line. He has a proverbial paddock. Acres and acres in front of him, takes a couple of bounces and then finds... Well, I thought it was Brown for a moment, but it's uh, West. Yes, West made uh, 50 or 60 metres from the middle of the field. Anderson follows up in support, ran his full measure as well. Around the corner looking for D. Smith, clean bowled, all players. Fleming tucks it under and goes off. A long handball to Clements, that's good work. They're building through Cowan. Now he evades the tackle on Anderson, it goes long and direct to Reed. Reed sets himself, but too soon. Ambrose read it much better. And at the back it's uh, Fiatchi, who distributes it wider still to the outer side. Where Darcy finding plenty of the ball, gathers it in, marks and kicks in the one motion. Kick number 11 for him. Fabian Francis with pace, watch him go. Oh, Dantokia ran him down. That was great work, Dantokia. But Borlase is marked. 55 out, needs support. Has Malakellis in short, ignores him. Goes long to D. Smith. The big fly across from Fleming. Thumps at the ground. West evaded a nosebleed. Gives it off to Borlase, who goes long to the square. Hodges has it punched away from him by Daniels. And now Maynard mops up cleverly to James, who blasts it long and relieves a little bit of the pressure, but it only ends up with Stephen Williams. Williams to the middle of the ground and finds Meade. He has improved, Daniels, hasn't he? He's got a good coverage of Hodges at the moment. To West, looks to hand off, gets inside. McIntosh provides the chase, but West has a look and just misses. And as all of that was going on, Rowan Smith is interchanged with Waterhouse. But we've got a five-point ball game. Twelve and a half minutes into this second term of the qualifying final. 
Dantokia will kick from full back. Clements gives him a lead. They like to go short to Fleming, however. Very little option, so he likes to go long. The big man was the target. Mead from behind, the big spoil. Did that pretty well. D. Smith to R. Smith, over the top to Malakalis. They're mesmerising him with the handball and their quickness. Well done, Malakalis. He's inside 50. Chips it short, set it up beautifully. Ball A's. Beautiful player, Malakalis. I have to pick him up. I've got to get someone to stand on him and run with him. Beautiful movement. Sidesteps. Just puts it on the ground and drills it straight down Borlase's throat. Won't miss. Daisy Borlase has one point so far in this match. Can make it a goal. He does so. Extends Port Adelaide's lead. They're 4 6 30. Norwood, two goals, 5 17. The margin now out to 13 points. He's kicked 1 1 to date. As we see the replay again, nothing more needs to be said. Norwood need more up forward. Irving came on, a better option in my opinion would be Prime in a forward pocket and maybe Irving to a wing. So we're 14 minutes into the second term and the Magpies have a 13 point break. Primus is going to win every tap in the middle simply by virtue of the height. Well done by Williams to Malakellis. The Magpie surge is underway big time. You just see McIntosh walking in the background there. They're being overrun at the moment. Daniels with some poise to Maynard. And every time they double back like that, they lose the momentum. And they turn it over. Hodges, check side kick round the body. And Fleming works back. Really should have taken that very costly because Rowan Smith's got one. Well, oh, Dale Fleming won't be happy with that. He just took it a little too easily. And Rowan Smith swooped on it and kicked his first. And he certainly told Dale Fleming about it. Just a pat on the head. And Port Adelaide making the play. They're fair dinkum. They have a go. Nord in all sorts. They've got enough, not enough people working. Put Dan Tocchi in plenty of trouble. Not a good handball. You're saying that uh, the Red Legs aren't having a go, Michael? There's no question they're not having a go. Their intensity isn't there. They're not working hard enough. And if you're going to play Port Adelaide, you've got to expect to work harder than they do if Ma you want any result. The margin out to 19 points. Rowe got it from Primus. Primus clearly winning the taps. Fiachi just couldn't get a bounce, could he? Over the top of it now, uh, Irvin. It's Nathan Irvin. Had a good year last year with the Red Legs. Drafted by Footscray. Delisted uh, and came home, or if you like, or back to the Red Legs. This is Ambrose. Explodes from 50 metres out from his defensive line. Pushes it towards Fleming. No second chances there. He just thumped it across the line and lets the Norwood defence reorganise. Irvin actually broke his ankle. He spent a lot of the times off the ground. He's just come back, fought his way into the league side. Boundary thrown on the far side as Borlase shapes up to come off the ground, limping. And Daryl Poole's getting organised to come on. Dan Tokia takes it at halfback. Another wonderfully consistent season from him. Snagged the best and fairest last year. And then gets it on towards Roger James. Now the old and the new, or the old to the new. Big fly on the far side as Mead thumps it over. Ball lays a limps off very badly to be replaced by Poole. Now they're down to one interchange player, Port Adelaide. Looks like he's got a back injury actually, Daisy. So. If in fact it is, you wouldn't imagine that he's going to get over that in a hurry. And the start of the match with the 21, they're down to 19. Primus gives it away. Rowe, hurried kick forward, did it pretty well in the finish. The Archie over the top, battles uh, with Kim Russell. Northeast fights even harder for it. Uh, Cop one high and went to ground. He's saying, look at him. He's choking me. Give me a free. That umpire Chambers was having none of that. There'll be a bounce. We've played just on 17 minutes of the second term. The Magpies lead by 19 points. The Red Legs need a quick goal here. Piachi. Oh, well done. Stolen by James. A hurried kick around the corner. This could work out for him nicely. Reed set himself. Couldn't mark it. Lees desperately. Lunges over the top of the ball. Pushes it out to Ambrose. Now look at the desperation by players there. And we suspect that that's uh, Borlase's knee. It is. So it's a knee injury, not a back injury, but clearly troubling him. Ashley Reed is a confidence player. He's got his hands to the ball 
quite a few times. It's going to be a little bit tougher in finals, and he really does have to make the best of his opportunity. Well, he kicked seven goals here last week, didn't he, against South in a pressure-packed game when uh, the Red Legs really needed to find that sort of finals form. It staggers me how the umpire can umpire a game 20 metres away from where the contest is. I know they're told to do that, but gee whiz, you're going to miss some pretty blatant frees. It's the Aussie Footy Show comments, Michael Ashen. It's the Magpies by 19 points. Mead got the thump away. What are you saying, Michael? Too close, too far away. I'm saying they're too far away. They need to get a little bit closer. 20 metres, too far away. Absolutely. 5 6, the Pies, 2 5, Norwood. 19 points in it, so they need a score, and they've got half a chance now with Groudon. Doesn't kick a lot of goals, Groudon, does he? First year play, he's kicked seven, and he hasn't played all games in the ones. But he has been another good recruit from North Wales. They stint with the Eagles, didn't he? They didn't want him. A bit like the Michael A story. <laughs> very important kick. And a very accurate kick. Norwood get one back. 5-6 plays, 3-5. Ground's kicked 1-1. One, one. Tyson presence of mind. He's had a fair bit of the ball. Had a couple of shots from that pocket. He needed to bring it back to the centre just in the nick of time as Fleming comes off. It's an interesting move, obviously, for that little indiscretion a little bit earlier. And Jonathan Ross back into the forward lines, maybe to give them some more height, some more strike power. 23 plays, 36. The margin back to 13 points. The Red Legs just need a couple to get back within touch. Primus is winning everything in Ruck. Uh, Mead's a solid uh, competitor. He just can't match the highest of Primus. This time, desperately, he thumps the ball down in the direction of Poole, who overran it. Uh, James had a kicking in danger. He looked for it. Cleverly done. Look at this. The Red Leagues working out. James is clever. Distributes it beautifully forward, and Reed was called out of it, I feel. Ambrose called him out. I suspect his team, he's a uh, direct opponent. And now players dive in, and it's a bounce. Obviously, tend to disagree, David. I think the ball was a little bit too high for him. He got underneath the ball. Wasn't a good kick. Well, he didn't even make an attempt after that, did he? He just well, gave up. He did. If that's what you're telling me. All right. Nord have reshuffled a little. And I agree with the move that Neil Craig, he has put Ross, Jonathan Ross to centre half forward. Robin's gone to centre half back or half back picking up uh, Darren Smith. Now on grandstand side. West, the tackle needs to be better by Harvey. Couldn't quite do it. And West runs away and then gives them half a chance spoiled puts the real pressure on uh, daniels back there though quick reflex in there they've got the numbers play on they've got a couple spare primus james is out wide if they want him daniels has a look and elects to go long michael shakes his head i think he thought the option should have been taken out the back lees and despite the numbers that norwood have down there port adelaide are going to work it out well done by wilson option had to be taken Stephen purely because of the fact is if you get it to that guy he can kick over the line and you've got guys then running onto the ball instead of getting into a 50-50 contest. Breaks up the play doesn't it? Big Chris Prime getting ready to come on one of their key goal scorers this year and Rowe runs out of bounds. Now I wondered Michael how the Red Legs would go. They've got Tyson who's kicked 48. He's there. Chris Prime sitting on the bench. He's kicked 41. Now Pieri, their other big goal scorer, is in the reserves. And kicked a a bundle. They have got plenty of options up there. Reed at the moment, but full credit to Port Adelaide. They really make it difficult and bottle it up for the Norwood forward line at the moment. Yes, they are. They're getting back quickly. They're ruck rovers and rovers get back quickly. There's a free kick. Darcy claimed uh, Rowe and got him. And Gary McIntosh hasn't been seen and really needs to get into it. Well, Grouden might be a move back into the middle. They're missing his drive. I think uh, Neil Craig decided to go with McIntosh for a big game in the middle. Now, after disposal, there was an infringement. Play on said the umpire. D. Smith charged at it. Out the back. Oh, there's a free kick. West was just manhandled off the ball. Cleverly done, Anderson. Gives it around the corner to Geneva, who bends it back. Sitting under it, Hodges. Daniels did very well. He's just worn him like a glove. Hodges has one so far. McCormack gives it to Dan Tokia. They're working it out in defence pretty well, but their forwards just aren't converting the Red Legs. And Dan Tokia now distributes it even further downfield. Irvin will get the run of it. It sits nicely for him. He needs support. Run down by Carter, a brilliant tackle. Northeast of age one gets off a handball, but it's across the line, and Lees can't get there. Irving had the ball and really just didn't know that Carter was behind him. Got to get it and give it. 
Prime coming on. And Reed going off the ground. So Prime looking like he'll assume those full forward duties. As he did when he was the club's leading goal scorer two years ago. Now they work it out. Every time McIntosh gets possessions, though, they've been very light in number. Something happens. Finishes with James, and they finally get one through. 5-6 plays 4-5. James gets his first. A lot better movement by Nord. Good hands by Harvey. And also Tyson gave James the opportunity. McIntosh picked off Harvey. McIntosh handball most of the time as good as a kick, as long as a kick. Look at that, one step and bang. Beautiful skill, R. Uh, James. 13 and 7, James is dominating that wing. Although Darcy's done a fair job as well. Darcy's been amongst it with 12 and 2, so finding plenty of ball on that wing. Seven points to margin as the Red Legs make a charge at Port Adelaide as we step towards half time. 23 and a half minutes into the second term. Dead heat in ruck that one. It falls from Rogue to Poole. Pulls through that away, by the way, and the umpire saw it and calls play on, allows the advantage to flow. Rowe on the left boot, drifts it up underneath that one. Ross was the target from behind Lees. Ross did pretty well. Ground and pushed off and out of bounds on the full by Carter. No, the ball was already across the right line. Down, so the look umpire, at that. No, he was right there, the umpire. It's a bit of a dried blood on him. Clive, without the bandage. There's another move by Nord in Primus off and Barm on. Yes, they're just going to give the Primus a rest before half time. They're going to really need him in the second half. Stephen Williams calls for a cab. He reckons that uh, there was a free kick there. And Primus goes to the bench. Just seven points in it. And we are 30 seconds from time on in this second term. I'm not sure where that free kicks come from quite frankly but it's going to be taken by Port Adelaide and in particular by Daryl Poole a great scene here at Football Park big crowd big game all set up spoiled down by Robin and another free kick will umpires can't hear me from here but would you take advice and just leave the players to play the game for a while stop pulling it up so often Craig Barr first kick for him Right up towards centre half forward, the box seat, Port Adelaide, duck the head, Wilson, Carter to northeast, and he's got Darren Smith on the grandstand side. Barm has uh, D. Smith, they're reorganising their defence. The Red Legs are trying to get more run, attack, and aggression, I suspect. Well done, Wilson to Geneva, but under pressure from Cowan, he kicked it out of bounds, it hit the line. Great give. Runner went straight out, incidentally, to Michael Wilson who uh, withdrew from the contest just a moment ago and emphatically made the point that if you commit, you must commit. Balm thumps it down. Malakalis, now he committed, and he gets claimed for it too high. McCormick's not happy with the decision now. Malakalis will look to uh, quickly get it on. Hodges has the sun in his eyes, so he comes in board now to Williams, but there's the replay, and you can see the infringement. The kick went directly to uh, S. Williams. 50 metres out. Now the old legs, will they make the distance? Oh, yes, he drifts it in, but uh, not quite the accuracy. Lovely kick in the end. Mm. Just, just leans back on it. Meters. He just leans back and uh, launches into it. He's, a one he's been a wonderful player for the Magpies. And Daniels went for a run and left Hodges about three minutes ago all by himself and stayed in the contest, which he really had to get back. Oh, Dan Tokyo sets McIntosh up, and I don't think that Gary will have enjoyed that. Still, he's earned a free kick. And in turn, his kick carries towards half-back and has Clements. So you get the feeling that Port Adelaide are well in command, but at the same time, there's only seven points of difference. Robin was down closer and perhaps could have been used. Had four people in the centre of the ground, didn't even look. Yep. Agree with you, Michael. Oh, oh that, that is good. a terrible decision. <laughs> Well, Cowan, I thought, had plenty of opportunity. Well, he just, he, he was down there anyway, and he just, it, if anything, it's holding the ball. Oh, gee. Well, the umpires are playing their part. There are three of them out there. And Anderson, on his second effort, makes Cowan pain. And do you reckon he would have got a rev from the port bench? Right in front of him. <laughs> what great atmosphere finals are. McIntosh stumps it forward. Carter at the back door. He's been a solid uh, defender in the latter part of the year. He was uh, a bit ordinary mid-year. Great in the early part and great in the latter part. This is Rowan Smith. Clements has been a wonderful pickup from uh, the Eagles. Mainly used as a uh, 
half back flanker or perhaps a back pocket player. Concedes oh. ground and goes to Robert. Now that's got shades of Sturt in it. No value. Oh, it's worked, but oh. I think Jastor has it. No. Clements. And hurt Maynard is hurt. He's down and he hasn't moved. Holding a face. Bad news for the Red Legs. Let's hope that's not serious. Dan Tokia goes long. James a fingertipper just inside the line. Now we need to get along quickly. McCormick's in board, uses him. He's too far out to score. Now Tyson, a little short one just over the top, is clear and available, ignores him. Now goes long. The leader's prime, one-handed attempt, and Poole knocks it off. Gives it to Fiachi. Couldn't get through the Tyson tackle. Harvey works hard for it. Gets support from Prime, the big man. Has a shot for goal, smothered. James, needs support. Gets it from McCormick. Did pretty well. Oh, caught one high. Oh, caught one real high. And uh, you can see the blood. You'll have to go off the blood rule. He really copped a good one. Looks a bit well, sore, doesn't it? Yes, barge through the pack. George uh, throws the arm out. Oh, that's a nasty one. He might get a bit mean after that. Yes, yeah, so I wonder... Uh, I think things happen too instinctively in there, but of course McCormack was the one who made Roger Delaney have a sore face at the end of their clash at about round 20, so I don't think George will have lined him up by any means. That would no. be unfair, but McCormack certainly is going to need some attention. Just coming off interchange now, and he will be very, very sore. He needs a good clean-up. You'll need a complete change of socks, shorts, jumper, as well as tidying up the nose. So, this shot is the kick from James. It's long yeah. and it's straight. And that's where the Red Links go on. That's a point. So, the siren sounds. It's half time. High drama in the qualifying final as Poy Adelaide 5 goals 7, 37. Lead Norwood 4 goals 6 30. The margin at half time is 7 points. All the action coming to you on ABC Sport. All set up for the last 60 minutes of this qualifying final. And you get the feeling at the moment that Port Adelaide are getting their goals a little easier. But notwithstanding that, Norwood are still very much within striking distance. Seven points behind. And the first ten minutes or so of this third term is going to be very important. Daryl Poole throws his weight around. Cops one. Gets up and goes on with it very quickly. Stephen Rowe gives some ground, then fires it around the body. Up towards the centre-half forward position where Paul Northeast has played pretty well. His dispatch is good to the far side where West is lurking. But it's going to be cut off by Rodney Maynard. Got to keep your eye on the ball. Nathan Irvin had it was in the air. You just had to turn around and make it a contest. So Stephen Rowe goes to centre wing. Plenty of pressure put on by North East. And Nathan Irvin's going to take it. Neil Craig in that first 60 minutes threw them around all over the place trying to get something going. He started with Matthew Robin at centre half forward. Then tried Jonathan Ross. And had Nathan Irvin at some various stages also lurking around the forward line. Primus. Off hands. Malakelas. He's been very, very damaging. A couple of bounces. Inside 50 gets around. Should go for holding the ball, but still gets it to Francis. A sure goal coming up. Oh, you would have thought so. But Francis has butchered it. Well, weren't the Red Legs lucky? 90 seconds into this third quarter. And that Fair could have build been very up. Hurtful. Absolutely. And if there's one player that is the most dangerous in this league, in my opinion, is Malakellis because he carries the ball, he runs through the lines and is very evasive. So Dan Tokia brings it into Maynard. Just nine possessions for Malakellis, but he's made every single one count. Centre wing, James and Darcy have had a classic duel. Wilson in over the top, Rowan over the top. We've got to bounce down. An overcast day, Michael, perfect for footy. Absolutely. Rob West, too, getting loose all the time. He's always out in the space, and he's the link. ABC Sport bringing you this qualifying final. The loser will play North Adelaide, the winner. The right to challenge top place Central District in next week's second semi. Good take by Kim Russell, who'd surely be enjoying his outing. 
that is what I mean with a contest. He wasn't in position, and he made position and finally ended up marking it. Very strong over the ball. Inside 50, good take by Poole, who is aggressive and has a go, no doubt about that. They transport the ball by virtue of a switch to the far side. Ambrose, as he looks up, he'll have shorter lees, and the publican should take it without any problem at all. Looks across the top. This is what happens when they get one spare. Carter to Rowan Smith, who started on interchange. He squeaks it inside, then has a look at Geneva. Any one of a number of options. No pressure from Norwood. Where have the red legs gone? Anderson gives some ground, then swings it around the body. Has a look at Waterhouse in front spot. Can't take it. Maynard, big pack of players, and they close it down. They have loose players everywhere on a continuing basis. And that's where Norwood's falling down. Apart from that, they're getting no drive from the centre-half forward position. And there it is. Essendon defeated the West Coast by 19 points. So there'll be no West Coast final next week. This is Dan Tokia. Fabian Francis got him. He's got terrific pace, the young man. And Ginova tried to spear it towards Williams, but it was chopped off by Robert. Over the top to Primus. Oh, they've bowled into each other. McIntosh needs to work hard. Now, that was a flick pass, if you don't mind. McCormick, with the nose bandaged and a new jumper, drives it forward. This is Groudon. Short. They're just not hitting the target, Michael. Although I, can, I can sense your frustration. Tyson, under intense pressure from Darcy, just let the ball slip. And now there's a free kick. Well, that is work ethic, and Port Adelaide Football Club are renowned for desperation, and they are very good. And a 25-metre penalty. Off the ball, some back chat with the umpire. And Michael Wilson with the free kick. Four kicks, six handballs, ten possessions. Good experience for the youngster. Drives it long and deep. Waterhouse the target from behind. Maynard thumps it to ground. Harvey gives it to Robert and on the left boot. That's just beautiful skills. Tyson caught one over the shoulder, said the umpire. And I probably tend to agree with you just a fraction, Michael, that uh, they've been a little soft, the umpiring, for a final. Northeast thumps it clear. Oh, McIntosh tried to crash through. Great work, Geneva. Just chopped him off at the pass. Created the run for Northeast. And Northeast goes forward and Fabian Francis marks right in the middle of football park. We're five minutes into the third quarter. A long torpedo. The target was Hodges. It's going to be too long for him. Thumped away. It falls to West around the corner. But uh, pretty ordinary, wasn't it, in the finish? Well, he may have had a little bit more time. But in finals footy, you shouldn't have. It's the Aussie Football Show. Live throughout South Australia and the Northern Territory. Trust you're enjoying our coverage of these two very traditional rivals this afternoon. 32 premierships to Port Adelaide, 26 to Norwood. But interestingly, Norwood have a better win-loss ratio in terms of the finals as Maynard brings it out. Series of handballs. The wave motion is pretty good. McCormack, who is bleeding very right heavily. Here. McIntosh. Beautiful handball and inside half forward, Kim Russell's got it. Cowan did pretty well, didn't he, with the kick? He did. Found him with the lace out. Now Russell, not renowned for long kicking, puts it right up to the square. Ross in the back spot. And Lee's barreled it forward. Prime. If they can get something going here, you sense it will just lift them, but they're not going to because Carter's marked it in the goal square. Gives it off to Lee's. Lee's looks for support, gets it wide. Wilson. Now uh, one of the rare occasions Port Adelaide looked to be going at half pace. The Wilson kick is a beauty to Malakalis. He'll play it on quickly. That's a beautiful give over the top to Ambrose. Now, Ambrose needs support. Malakalis is in real trouble here. It's three on one. McIntosh gets it. Well done, Harvey. Applied the tackle. Gives it to Rowe. And bang! It's the tractor at 45. Well done by McIntosh, wasn't it? Just rounded up the players there. Well, I thought Harvey was the player that applied the tackle and just opened it up for Macca. Well, if the give was spot on, Port would have been away. Fortunately for the Red Legs, it wasn't. Big Chris Prime, 41 goals for the year, not one today. 181 career goals. Vice captain of the club, he spent a bit of time in the reserves through in different form, put in a big pre season and misses. Now, that, Michael, is an important kick. Well, they're all important, particularly when you're kicking for goals. Just pivotal to the ebb and flow well, of the it game, is. though, wasn't it? Yes, what are we, seven minutes into this third term? 
Norwood just need to draw closer. If you've just joined us, North Adelaide defeated West by 20 points and will face the loser of this match next week in the first semi-final. Of course, the winner will go through to face Central District in the second semi-final. Port Adelaide clear it away from that danger zone. Fiachi's got it out there. In the remaining sunshine at Football Park, this game started a little later, so it's going to get dark. We'll need the lights a little later in the day, you would imagine, as Malakellis transports it another 50 metres, then kicks it 50. So it was a good carriage, wasn't it? Right up towards that full forward line. And we'll have a neutral ball. And the news uh, just to hand is that David Brown has gone to hospital with uh, what Port Adelaide officials suspect is ligament damage to the knee. And uh, bad news for Port Adelaide and uh, bad news for David Brown. He's had a wretched season, hasn't he, after a reasonable start with the Crows. He looked like establishing a good spot. And then broke his cheekbone out of Elizabeth. That's a high tackle also on West. So they'll get another crack at it inside the 50-metre line. The handball from the Norwood player was very loose. In fact, it was straight to the Port Adelaide player. All he had to do was hold it in and not give it so quickly. So just two behinds for West so far. Looking into the sunshine. It's going to make Norwood's task just a little more difficult. The margin out to 13 points. And West gets his first at the nine minute mark of the third term. Uh, the Magpies keep the legs at arm's length. Six goals for the season. And another clumsy effort. Although throwing the hand out, it's very easy to be critical. But you just have to wrap them up. 28 goals, I should say. Thirteen points the margin. Here's the goal kickers for Port Adelaide. Uh, Williams, Hodges, Smith, Borlays, Brown, West. They've got six. For Norwood, James, Harvey, Tyson and Groudon. They've got four. They need more. Their key forwards aren't functioning, the red legs. And they need their runners to force it in. Pull to Darcy. Darcy's been working very hard this afternoon. It's a long ball to Hodges. A man-on-man -man battle. Well done. Daniels from behind. Thumped it down. Robran peels it off to Harvey, who chips it short. Now, this is where they build, uh, and they need to build, the red legs. Groudon, a long ball to half forward. The target up there underneath it was Tyson. Thumped away by North East and across the line there. Very tough. Well, in that LA instance, defense. exactly. In that instance, the kick has to be spot on, and it wasn't. It was on top of his head. Gives the defender so much more opportunity. Footy Park is the scene of this qualifying final, which has Port Adelaide in control by 13 points. Groudon. I reckon, to be fair, neither side has a winning or dominating forward at the moment. Port Adelaide are just making the most of their run. Williams over the ball. Michael Ace thought it was holding the ball. Well, midway through the third quarter, and you've got 10 goals scored. Stands to reason, doesn't it? Just nobody can get amongst it. I just wonder whether there's not a player, Chris Prime or Scott Hodges, that could blast in with three or four big marks and kill the game. Just dribbled off the hand there for James. And across the boundary line. Caught in two minds, Roger James. Just about to kick it. <laughs> He threw it out of bounds. So a boundary throw in. They set themselves up. Jonathan Ross brings it back to the defensive side. Not a bad ploy. James to Maynard, who usually makes something happen. This is a tough one to take, though. Carter did the best. Umpire had the sun in the eyes. Thought it was a mark. Not paid. And just inside that 50-metre line, we'll have another bounce. So neither side really able to do anything decisive. Other than the fact that Port Adelaide have a little break in terms of getting one goal, and we're 11 and a half minutes into this third term. The style of game suits Port Adelaide. They're quite content to bottle it up. The Red Legs need to get it out into the spaces and run it, so they're falling right into the hands of the Magpies. James handballs it wide, over the top of the ground, and under pressure from Darcy. He's been terrific at this term. Fiachi looks for support, needs it from Malakalis, finally gets it, draws the player. Did that pretty well, over the top to D. Smith. Now he's in trouble. Oh, look at the give. Malakalis just missed it. The handball was a fraction low, but uh, not severe. Geneva around the corner goes to the 50-metre line. Hodges bustles out. Waterhouse there. Hodges pushes it forward. Daniels is tripped. That's a free. Lacking fitness, obviously, Scotty Hodges. Yeah, but he'll be better for the run, surely. Absolutely. If they can get him through today's game... And win. And they play in the second semi-final, then they've just got a couple of weeks to get him fit for a grand final. He could be pretty useful. Maynard got it from uh, Kim Russell. 
That's in half back call to play on, does so. Now Cowan right on the defensive 50 metre line, looks for support. Great shepherd uh, by Clements. Williams and Clements just go at it behind play. Now Robert, oh, just waited for the ball. Was that a free? It was. Now they're calling advantage. Now what advantage was there there? It must come back, thank you. Well, it's a good decision by the umpire. Andrew Schwaffer. Well, I think after the initial error, he had no choice. He recognised it, pulled it back. Fair enough. Now Robren on the outer wing. Spears it down the middle and primes the target. Got hands to ball, brings it to ground. Tyson goes out the back door. Maynard now, is he brought into the forward line to get some grunt up there? Too high, no, holding the ball. He had plenty of time and couldn't get rid of it. Gang tackle, Rowan Smith and Waterhouse. They, half an hour. Yep, they got him. Half and an hour? <laughs> half an hour to get rid of it. That is what Port Adelaide is all about. 13 points the difference. Waterhouse goes to the far side. Not a good kick from Clive. It's going to be picked off by Cowan. Inside, Dan Tokio. Under some siege, so the pressure showed on the kick. Maynard picked it up. Would be keen to make amends for that little error just a moment ago. Tackle. I'm not sure whether that punching is going on at the ball or the head, but it's going to be a bounce down. And one of the interesting things is that that's a yellow ball, obviously. And a red ball was used in the first half. And we're told that the umpires wanted to continue with a red ball, but for some reason the league said, no, you will use the yellow leather. So and don't they sure make some right is. decisions? I'd have to bet what the league do. I reckon they're disgraceful. Well, that's the rule, and everybody knew the rule. And uh, I think they've all got an equal footing. It doesn't give either side an advantage, and uh, I don't think that causes anyone a problem. Northeast from the side of the boot inside Tyson's half a chance. The leg break. Now Prime, oh. and Prime's butchered it also. Well, talk about missing some opportunities. They really needed that one. 6 8 plays 4 8. Two clear goals the difference. No confidence in the Norwood forward line at the minute, and Port Adelaide, in my opinion, are just playing far too good for the Red Legs. There are only two goals up, and uh, plenty of time for the Red Legs, and you just need a couple of, like Prime, to take a couple of big marks, and they're right back in this game. Wilson on the left, a high ball to D. Smith, under it, uh, thumped away. Malakalis, Rowan Smith, West, and he dribbles it through. No, he didn't. <laughs> Daniels has done pretty well today, hasn't he? It's a clever kick, wasn't it? Yeah, Fair clever kick. kick. Actually, it uh, was the right idea, but I think if he had just had to loft it, really, he still had the angle. Now Poole. Oh, good courage. He had Irvin coming at him, held his line, didn't deviate. And uh, I think you'll find that privately John Carr would just deplore him mentally and take a note for final selection. Waterhouse underneath that. Oh, that's great work too. Groudon had the chance to go over the top, but Waterhouse... Superior upper body strength, just held his ground and took the mark. Lovely grab by Clive, not one of his bigger outings. Four and two. We got three goals last week, has uh, 47, 40, 47 goals this year. Didn't add to it then. 47 goals, 25, Ace. Is that an acceptable return for a half forward flanker? I reckon it would be. It's it? not too bad. I think that uh, when you're talking about that many shots for goal, You've, 70, got to, you've, got to, plus. you've got to balance it out whether they're on the run, under pressure, or they set shots. Mm. Port Adelaide a 6-9, Norwood a 4-8. Still 13 points the difference. They just need a break through the red legs. Get some momentum up. Every time they've challenged, the Port Adelaide push or surge has just seen them keep them at arm's length. Maynard's in there. He's one who can make it happen with reflex like that. Away they go through the midfield. It ends up with Groudon. Hands it back. Russell. Those little legs pumping like a piston inside half forward. Northeast, now they're half a chance. Irvin around the body. Can they manufacture something out of nothing? Not this time. Because Lees works back and the public can seize it across the line very happily. Twelve points the difference. The Red Legs need something. They need a spark. They're just playing without emotion at the moment. Port Adelaide just appear to be in control. Workmanlike almost. Carter marks on the 50 metre line. He'll go back and take the kick. <laughs> Nick Wilson was looking to uh, take charge of that. Carter clearly took the mark. He'll play it long and low. Anderson's the target. Maynard the spoil. Oh. Yeah, I've got to agree with you. I, I've got to come in and say that uh, some of the umpiring in this match has been very, very soft. Uh, this is a final, and I think uh, spectators come to see the players perform. Pool. To Rowan Smith, through half forward he goes, drills it long and low, Fabian Francis, he's got it, just drifted in, hung like a butterfly, 
and now he'll sting like a bee because he'll kick for goal from 15 metres out almost directly in front. Rowan Smith with the run and can't some decisions cost the footy side. And you think of the pace that uh, John Carroll's lost over the last three or four or five years. To get a guy like this back for a final series, he's only played, what, five or six games coming back from uh, the AFL. Averages a couple of goals a game, and his pace has been terrific. It's been a real bonus as uh, you come into finals weather. And that one's right through the middle. That's a buffer. 7-9, the Magpies. The Red Legs, four goals, nine. Three-goal buffer to the Maggies. Well, he was never going to miss it. It was a beautiful catch in the end. In the meantime, Stephen Rowe, who, again, normally gets 30-plus touches, is off. And when you've got on ballers in McIntosh and Rowe down on form, you're going to struggle. Three straight goals, the difference. And you're quite right. Those on ballers in the middle need to lift. Player coming back off the ground is McCormack, seemingly with a blood rule again, and Fleming coming on. That's uh, a very sore news, uh, nose. Let's have a look at the goal kickers. A string of singles. So Fleming given an opportunity to get back to the mark there. He'll pick up Anderson, who's playing at half forward. Rowan Smith and Darcy are on the wings. And we're 19 minutes into this third term. 7-9 plays 4-9. Can Norwood do something? Who's going to put their hand up and make something happen out there? Because Port Adelaide seemingly are in control. I'm looking at Central District already next week. Maynard, her James, had a look at Irvin, decided against it, and then goes to Ross. They're being forced very wide, aren't they? Tyson, inside, still good enough to get it away, but not with any accuracy. Ross, and it goes across the line. Don't forget the Gary Medal live. 8.30 this Tuesday night, the 12th of September. And who's your favourite? Gary McIntosh, perhaps uh, Glenn Kilpatrick, maybe a dark horse, uh, Stephen Schwert or Jim Wind from Central. There's plenty of choices. It's probably going to be the most even count in years. And I'd uh, represent you, there's probably 13 or 14 players in with a chance. Ross, claimed high, still got the kick away. It goes forward. Prime was there, couldn't take a grab. Russell, handballs it forward. Groudon to Russell. Gee, look at the pressure by the Port Adelaide defence. Carter was very good. Darcy wide to Rowan Smith, and they're running the Magpies. They lead by three goals, and they're streaming forward. Who can chop them off? Northeast, look at the run. Where's Irvin? Not there. And he drills it forward to Waterhouse. One hand. That was an important touch because it ricocheted forward to Stephen Williams. Now, Waterhouse is run down by Clements. Handballs it to Rowan Smith. Oh, it was a desperate handball, and it came off. Fabian Francis can't quite control it. McIntosh calculated, just chopped him off. Tackle. Cowan, Francis got him. Yep, great tackle. Stephen Williams, look at it in the clinches there. This is tight. Anderson, Geneva, 30 out. He'll kick it. And he does. Four goals to buffer. The Magpie machine rolls on. They certainly do. And the shepherd for Geneva was superb. Gave him plenty of time. And knew it. This handball from McIntosh just puts him under pressure. They've done it all day. Good work. They continue to just do the little things to push the ball forward. And in the end, look at the Shepherd. Lovely. So all of a sudden, Port Adelaide have doubled the score in terms of the number of goals anyway. Eight to four. Norwood, it's not beyond them, but the alarm bells are ringing very loudly. They need a couple of goals. They need them very quickly. Harvey. Entries are being thwarted at the moment, one after the other. This time it's Ambrose. He hands off to Wilson. In turn, it could have been Fiachi, but the leg is on, and it goes to Darcy. Out the back. His battle with James has been superb throughout the day. They're probably square with a ledger, I reckon, at the moment. Here's a decent chance. Reed, Thiessen, a tough one from there. Across the face of goals. Hugs the boundary line and finally goes over. How do you rank uh, Thiessen today, Michael? Been very quiet. Ten kicks, five handballs. He has, in respect to, he's there to kick goals. Hasn't had a lot of opportunities, but uh, you give full credit to the Port Adelaide defence. They have been on top. Quite terrific, haven't they? 22 minutes into the third term. Malakalis sells the dummy, drills it to Rowan Smith. He comes back in board. 
to Lees. This is where they're dangerous, Port Adelaide. They just run it so hard from defence. Force it in by sheer weight of numbers, and then they follow up. Primus hasn't had the impact in the second uh, half, or at least in this third quarter, that he could have, or did in the first half. Harvey goes short. This is Reed, well out from full forward. A long high ball to Jonathan Ross, and the big man's got it. 35 metres out, the angle's tight, and distance shouldn't be a problem. Well, he's picked him off beautifully. Jonathan Ross, I don't know how many games he's actually played for the year, but we know oh, be a, a handful, horrific handful, run wouldn't it? through injuries. Exactly. Now, I just question why you'd pick him on a fitness in a first-up qualifying final. I think you go with the height. You uh, you look for an advantage, and Norwood would have said dry day, a height advantage, and he kicks for goal. And it's a mark on the line, and push. Prime's got it. No, it's a push. It's against the big fella. Definitely was a push. And, and I suppose you're going without Smart and Miller. You need some height, don't you? Uh, they're both out injured. We haven't mentioned that so far. Yeah, but what's the use of height if you're not fit? I think one of the players they are missing very badly is Miller because of his toughness at centre-half back, his ability to control the area. But having said that, they can't get anything through the forward lines either. Here's Waterhouse. Clean taken is away. Cowan did very well on the chase, but Waterhouse still kept control of it. Maynard will certainly burn off Maynard. Away he goes around there. He's transported the ball about 55 metres, maybe 60. And then it gets cut off. He split the middle, didn't he, between uh, Williams and Hodges. Not a bad move. Craig Baum on. And with any luck, he'll rough them up a bit from a Norwood point of view. Runs straight into Lee, so they know they've got a contest out there. That's a good take by Primus. 11 hitouts, 16 possessions, and just a couple of marks from Big Matt. Said earlier that he plays a bit like, like Jim Steins in terms of a ruck roving role. Well, not quite so many possessions today, but his ruck work's been okay. He'd be another one in contention for the uh, McGeary medal, Primus. Tuesday night. Rowan Smith's got it on the far side. Has a look at Hodges. Good spoil from Daniels. He's a vastly improved player. Comes out the back. A couple of Norwood players there. Except it's been a free kick paid. Well, I'm surprised that he didn't pay in the back to start with on Hodges. Then he's picked up the throw. Or the scoop. I'll bring it across ground to the red legs and have a look at Clements. Has some time and has some space. Has a look at Matthew Robin. Beautifully weighted kick. Gave Matthew every good chance and he takes a good mark on centre wing. Then sneaks it out. James, inside half forward. Reed is there. He's been well covered. Not quite on that occasion. And they are struggling for a key forward, aren't they, the Red Legs? Reed gets one high and then gets a little belt for it as well. Not sure what George was trying to do there. Well, undisciplined. That's one thing John Carr wouldn't want. Looks like it's going to be 50 metres. And when you talk about playing Port Adelaide, you play 20 or 21, in this case, of hard-nosed players, which Nord haven't been. I said that Reed obviously... Didn't need to fall over, but just demonstrated that he had been hit. His pull comes off, and Darren Mead comes back on. Now, this shouldn't be a problem for Reed. They call him the duck, and he's got his first for the outing. Port fans don't like it, but Norwood gets to within three goals. Well, they haven't played well, the Red Licks. As we've said, Neil Craig just doing the changes all day. Robin, Ross, Barn throw them all around, well nothing in that either. And a lovely kick for goal from Reed, who's down on confidence today. They really need to bring in, he needs to hit it hard and take a good grab. Very similar to West Adelaide Norwood today. Just nothing up forward. Back in the centre. 8-9 playing 5-9. Again Primus and again McIntosh. That's a deft touch, isn't it? Quick kick forward, being held once again. I was just thinking, you know, that Reed does have a height and advantage if they can get it down there quickly. Not a bad move, but the give from McIntosh was like lightning. Superb. Well, have a look at that. The contest it is. He was held. Didn't hold that ball for very long <laughs> either, though, did he? So Ashley Reed, really a chance to stand up and deliver here. We're 27 minutes into this third term. If they get a couple in a row, and the push is with them, the feeling they just may be able to go on with it, what's he done is missed. It's all hypothetical when he misses like that. 8-9 plays 5-10.
Yes, you do need to wrap them up. What, they've had five goals, 15 scoring shots for the day. You've got to make every one of them count. Ball's gone into the crowd. We've got 17 points the difference. And we said earlier about the win-loss record in terms of the finals between these two. Well in favour of Norwood. They're under a bit of pressure to maintain that record here this afternoon in the qualifying final of 95. Williams from the ground. Harvey. Good pressure from Anderson. Closes it down on centre wing. Another one, Harvey, being reasonably quiet. Picks up many of possessions for the Red Legs. Down on form a bit today. Three minutes into time on. Pushed forward by Primus. First there is James. His game's been outstanding. Across the top. Cowan from 55 or 60 metres out. It goes right down to the square. The bounce is offline, though. And through for behind. Oh, they're attacking the goal front. They need a better return. One more scoring shot, Port Adelaide. But they just seem to do it a little bit easier and more efficiently than Nord. Ambrose, in the absence of Delaney. Just wonder if Delaney's going to front next week. Some suggestion that he might with a helmet. Keeping it in play and doing so unsuccessfully. It was Groudon. Good effort. Just intercepted. That's what we were talking about a bit earlier with Roger Delaney's ability to just hit a port player every time he kicks it. Ambrose, though, has done pretty well there. As always, Port Adelaide have lifted a gear or two come finals time. And they've got their very good players back in action. They're lucky at the moment in the sense that they don't have many injuries. Here, though, is Reed. Can he make something happen? Very high. There's too many short Norwood players under it to make anything happen. Darcy, who takes it off hands and then puts it very close to the boundary line, a well-weighted kick. And in front of Brian Lees, it goes across the line. They work well when the ball hits the ground. They have one at the contest, maybe two, and they have players streaming down the field to create options. Are there any moves you can see that can rejuvenate Nor uh, Norwood? Well, he's tried plenty to date. Barm's on there that can throw his weight around, but uh, when the ball hits the ground, there's just the desperation of Laporte players has really told. Just a little difference in intensity, isn't it? They play with that bit more urgency in finals. Russell's well claimed. Somehow they sneak out of the pack. It's a beautiful handball by Craig Baum. Harvey needs the goal and he nails it. Well, the game's still alive at the 30-minute mark of the third term. Second goal for Harvey and Norwood get a bit closer, but not any closer, though, because uh, the siren has gone to finish what was a good push from them towards the end, Michael, and they finish the term with Port Adelaide at 8-9, Norwood at 6-11, 10 points in it. OK, we're ready to start the final quarter. 10 points, the Magpies. Can the Red Leagues come back, Stephen Trigg? Uh, we think they can, but at the moment, Port Adelaide have the poise, and they do do it a little easier when they enter that forward line of theirs, so... Something's going to have to turn around for the Red Legs. They have had, so far, around about 30 possessions more for the game, the Red Legs. But many of those have been in the handball department trying to get themselves out of trouble. Much better use of the ball from Port Adelaide so far. Centre wing. They work it out, Port Adelaide. Wilson to half forward where Smith is being picked up by Robin. Groudon's there. And... Have another bounce down. A little bit of pushing and shoving. Nothing in that, though. Craig Baum, centre-half forward. So another positional change. Probably the third player that Brian Lees has picked up today. So they've had some problems through that area, haven't they, Nord? They've got some big names sitting on the bench at the moment. Stephen Rowe and Jonathan Ross. Well done by Clements. And McCormack's the other one on the bench for the legs at the moment. And Daniels, he has been impressive from fullback. He's covered... Scott Hodges very well, and again they find the boundary line. Craig Barn will give them a competition at centre half forward, there's no doubt about that. He needs the half forward flankers to support him. Primus pushes it forward to ground and gets a little push. The umpire had a very close look at it and comes in to bounce it down. The lights are on. It would seem anyway, just looking at that action.
pool. Knocked away by the legs to McIntosh. And around the body goes McIntosh. He's got Irvin at half forward. McIntosh with 19 possessions. You think he's been quiet, but he's still had a reasonable volume of them. Sets it up. Prime, what can he do? Can he make something happen? It comes out to Barn. If he can squeeze it out, there a chance. But he's held and holding the ball. Beautiful tackle by Ambrose. They've done it all day. As Neville mentioned, Ambrose, Fiachi, Northeast, Lees. The Ambrose kick goes to halfback. Port Adelaide are there in numbers. It's a clever piece of work by Maynard. Quick kick forward. Who's there? Prime. As we said, sometimes it pays to just get it on the boot rather than trying to manufacture something. And on this occasion, it's fallen in his lap. Port Adelaide have done it for years, haven't they? Just get it, push it on, run in numbers, crash in. The prime kick is very close. But for Neil Craig and his red legs, not quite close enough. Two and a half minutes into the last term. 8-9 plays 6-12. Well, he's got a beautiful leg, Chris Prime. He just has to take a little bit more time. Just rushed it a bit. George Fiacci to bring it back into play. Does that by finding Darcy. To Fiacci. Too easily around Prime. Awkward looking kick towards centre wing. And an awkward bounce. Fortune favours the Brave. And this time it was with uh, Robren. Only as far as Ambrose has been impressive. This is a little tug on the hair for his trouble. Well, he has been very good. Look at the grab. Under plenty of pressure. And the umpire says 25 metres. And Chris Prime says, all I'm doing is standing there, manning the mark. Ambrose to the outer side. Oh, look at this. D. Smith. Now, Robin was about 20 metres away. And Darren's just taken a clean possession. Kicks it forward. Maynard, good courage. Backed into Waterhouse. Brian Lee's a long way from centre-half back. He's on the half-forward line now. Towards full forward. The big leap is up. Opportunity for Mead. He couldn't take it. Pardon me. Harvey gets away. Now Russell. Clemens. Fleming. Daniels, who's done a terrific job today on Scott Hodges. He's played him tight as a glove. The ball sat nicely for Fiachi. Goes to the back door. D. Smith. Far to Wilson. A left footer. A high one. And underneath it, Anderson oh. just got the sit beautifully, didn't he? Roger Jones expected him to stand on his head. And, and he could he have, I think. Did it nicely. I think Reed needed to attack the ball with a little exactly. more fervour at the other end just a moment ago. It's not setting a good example as Russell comes through the middle of the ground. Couldn't have picked out a port player better, but thankfully there was enough pressure from the Norwood point of view. Irvin, good-looking athlete, up towards half-forward. Prime gets pushed out of the way, but they need some numbers. Some spark down there for the Red Legs is what they need, but they just can't get it. Port Adelaide are too poised. That's a better way to attack the ball. James not rewarded for it on this occasion. McIntosh, great tackle. A great tackle, and if it was anybody besides Macca, it would probably be holding the ball. That effort by Chris Prime was absolutely pathetic. He just didn't hold his own. It was pushed aside far too easily, and that's what they can't afford to do. Comment Michael Aish. Baum, the 34-year-old veteran of 201 games, thumps it forward. There's a lot of numbers there, Michael. What does Sorry. that mean? 251. 251. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Sorry. And Clements pushed off the ball. Oh. Free kick. Well, the crowd's incensed with this umpiring today. And, well, it's not the sort of uh, hard-nosed umpiring you really need for finals. Well, that's just a soft little bump. Not really a push. And this is Primus. To centre-half forward, Fiachi. Well, there's not a lot of competition there, is there, at the moment, through that half-forward line. And Neil Craig would be beside himself over that. It's letting them down very badly. For all that, they're only nine points out of the game, for goodness sake. Here's Anderson. And they're going to be a bit further down shortly because the Magpies are out of their nest and they are swooping in towards the full forward line. Not this time by Darren Smith. Clements There's a little wonder about his ability to stand up to the pressure out there at the moment. Francis just took too long. This guy stood the pressure and he's done it very well. Daniels, other than picking out Port Adelaide in the middle of the ground. Where's Jonathan, where's Jonathan Toombs, uh, Michael? In the reserves. Fair enough, he's been their full-back, uh, but uh, Daniels really has uh, held that position late in the year. Look, well, Norwood fans are calling for a throw, and Carter lobs it right in the square, and Daniels just got fingertips to it. Lovely. He's been quite yeah. exciting. We've done that a lot of justice, incidentally. Malik Kellis was hand handed the ball, lying on the, on the ground, ground, and with his back on the ground, just handballed it to a runner. Exceptional. 
<laughs> well, the Red Legs aren't out of it. There's just 10 points in it. And they haven't played their best football, let's be honest. But neither have Port Adelaide. So you've got to give credit to both defences who have been very tight and very hard. It hasn't been a high-scoring game. We've had 14 goals scored in three quarters and seven minutes of football. And that's an indictment on the fact that the defences have been very miserly and tough. Well, I think Alan Stewart, the Central District coach, would be looking at this and thinking, if I can get a forward who can produce five or six, maybe seven goals for me in a final, I'm going to be well served. Because while Hodges is contained, Port Adelaide have also struggled, you see. So I just wonder about Norwood's options. Certainly Reed has struggled. Jonathan Ross has struggled. Matthew Robin's probably the best shot that he hasn't provided well, today. The thing about their big men is that none of them has actually run through, taken or missed a mark, and then taken a body like, say, a Gary Ablett or a Tony Lockett uh, or a Jason Dunstall do. They open up a hole for the next attack on the ball. James to Robin. There's a bit of class in all that as it goes to Maynard. Irvin trying to provide the run as Cowan, but it goes across the top. Little push out by Fiacci on Reed. Port fans are doing a little war dance down the front here. Not happy. As Reed from 70 metres out thumps it up there from the instep, but it's very lucky because Prime should have taken it and didn't. Well, he had Maynard short. In hindsight, I think he picked the right option, but Chris Prime, both hands to it. You've got to earn every mark, kick, tackle you get. <laughs> well, Port Adelaide make you earn a bomb tough at the contest with Poole bustled off at McIntosh by Carter Malakalis tried to fire out one in the direction of Geneva but it was just chopped off by Kim Russell Maynard sweeping through half back there he's done it well all day he's been a pretty good player and I just wonder why the Crows didn't feel that they could use his services in anything but uh, what two or three games this year Bam. now he's the sort of big tough man that they need Poole over the top of it uh, wrapped up by Russell this is a tough contest, make no mistake. These players will come off very sore, tough and tired. We see Brown in hospital. We see on the bench with a knee injury. The crowd. And the Port Adelaide fans rise. They're willing their side on. This is finals football. This is where Port Adelaide excel. And you shouldn't make the mistake of tipping against them. Well, it's desperation. There's no question about that. Both clubs have given them their all. Port Adelaide, as we said, more efficient to this date. We're only 10 minutes into the final quarter. Great atmosphere. We're 10 minutes into this all-important last term. Who's going to get a crack at Central District next week? It's still in dispute. Rowan Smith across the top. A little wayward, though. To put some pressure on McIntosh. Barnstorming his way through. You want to be careful there, Gary. Again, no holding the ball decision. West emerges with the ball to Malakellis inside. He has no options whatsoever. Sets it up, watch out, Fleming will crutch in and Ginevo is hurt. Well, I don't believe that that's a free kick even, if you don't mind, because Ginevo copped the hip and shoulder, but he was going to get a free kick. The advantage is paid, West puts it up there. The pressure's on and the goal's on. No, it's touched. And Ginevo, meantime, very slowly gets to his feet on centre wing. Well, Daniels got there again, didn't he? he Just did. a fingertip. He's been Noel's best player today, Daniels. Tim Ginevo, very tough. He is tough, it's great credit to him, but yeah. was there a free kick there? It was hip and shoulder. That's all it was. And a tough finals hip and shoulder. Roger James, a star recruit for the Red Legs this year. And Being probably the rookie of the year, I would imagine. I think uh, he'd be hard pressed to be beaten for it. 31 possessions to James. That's not a bad outing, is it? Here he is again. 32 with that handball. Handball number 14. The bottom of the pack, there's some tough work, and you're right, there'll be some very sore and tired boys. Darcy squeaks it inside. Francis, a little bit of shadow boxing, then punches it up to the line, do you mind? Almost over. But finally, through for a behind, so 8-12 plays 6-12. We've got two clear goals the difference, and we've played 11 minutes of this last still, quarter. Still anyone's game, by the way. I mean, you'd have to fancy Port Adelaide the way they played, but... It's not beyond Norwood to kick uh, three or four quick ones and get above the Magpies and steal the game. West is good. That is exactly the desperation. Cowan had all the time in the world. West was about 10 metres behind him. The, the delivery was just too slow. Now you're sounding like a Port Adelaide, uh, a Norwood supporter, Michael. Primus. You're not happy with them, but they can still win. Cowan gives it off to the run of Harvey, who in turn 
has support from ground and he squares it up towards the centre half forward position. It's the right thing to do, bluntly, but it's Fianci at the back. Now, did he mark over the top of Reed? That just shouldn't happen. I take your point now. And Lees bounds away. The big man acting like a rover. That's four bounces. Just cleared all traffic and chips it into West. That's well done. West plays on. Rowan Smith mid through the midfield. He's 25, 30 metres out. And closing, he's got it. Port Adelaide 9-12. Rowan Smith gets his second. They lead the Red League. Six goals, 12. It's three goals up yet again. And the test is on for the Red Leagues. Great work by Brian Lees. Again, marshaled the troops in defence. Just ran, carried the ball. Summed up. Didn't kick it and gave it to Rowan Smith, who just casually. It was actually West that gave it to him. Look at that take. Beautiful. Crunch time for Norwood. Three goals the difference. McCormack's coming on for Reed, and I'm sure that Neil Craig would be disappointed with Reed. That ball is screamed out of their forward line on a couple of occasions. Free kick in the middle. And the one thing that Norwood should be alert to is that. The Port Adelaide wingmen love to run forward. David Hutton, Rowan Smith, whoever it is that's playing there, obviously Hutton's not playing today, or Anderson, they all run forward. Troy Bond when he was there. The Malakellis kick to centre wing it goes. Dan Toki has been effective, not dominant, but effective. With 11 positions and it goes across the line. A good crowd, nearly 26,000 people in. And the league would be pretty happy with that, uh, Michael. They expected between 25 and 30,000 people at the game. No question that Port North are going to pull a good crowd. And probably... The Western North had something to do with it. Oh, absolutely. But uh, you probably won't see this crowd for too many times. Righto. Mead dumps it forward for West. He's been terrific. Explosive. Time for a bounce, if you don't mind. He lines them up. Well, that's about it. The Magpie Machine is on the march. West gets his second. What an explosive one it is. And you can't see the Red Legs getting back from here. That's the one that shell shocks them. And the Red Legs are gone. Well, haven't they got some pace? And two guys in particular, you can put Tony Melakellis and Robbie West, who have got plenty of pace, but they're so casual. They carry the ball. They don't get rid of it. They've got plenty of time. This is a great demonstration of creativity from on-ballers. They've won them the game today, the Magpies, in the absence of any dominant forward. The centre line and the Ruck Rovers and Rovers have been complete. Right up to the forward line now, Fleming's been let off his leash. Hands it inside. McIntosh from 48 metres doesn't miss many and hasn't really quite got the accuracy on this occasion. Even Gary in his 307th and record-breaking or equaling game. Can't do it for the Red Legs. He's carried them all before, hasn't he? Well, he has. He's certainly a great skipper. Ambrose from fullback. Elects to go to the outer side. He's been pretty solid there today, too. He's had reads measure, that's for sure. Poole hands it off to Fiaci. They're just running and destroying now. Port Adelaide, they are pillaging. They would have got hands on hips. Yep. I think they know they're gone. They're just going to face up next week to North Adelaide. And they'd fancy themselves against North Adelaide. But I suspect that uh, Daryl Hart would just be smiling and saying, well, I reckon we're a chance. Well, when you look at... Uh, <laughs> there's a very, very unhappy supporter. But when you look at uh, North Adelaide's strength, is it in their pace? And you can convey that to Port Adelaide in Melakellis and West. Very pacey and very direct. Well, what a couple of matchups we're going to see next week on ABC Football on the footy show. We're going to see Port Adelaide and Central District tough it out in the second semi-final. And we're going to see Norwood and North Adelaide in running hard reflex football in the first semi-final. And one of North Adelaide or Norwood will be finished next week. D. Smith missed it. Waterhouse off the ground, heads towards the goals, but it ends up across the line and out of bounds. It's difficult to see Norwood bouncing back. They've got to win three games on the trot. They three can, tough they, finals they games. They can do it. North Adelaide, of course, defeated West Adelaide by 20 points. We're 16 minutes into the final term of this qualifying final between Port Adelaide and the Redlegs. There's the big fly, Robberin. Well, he has shown flashes, hasn't he? Well, it's a beautiful grab. Big mark over the top of Poole, who won't like to see that, and that's a big one also by Lees, not paid. It was a big leap. McIntosh, off hands. Port fans sure thought it should have been a go uh, mark. And Fleming's got it inside the 50-metre line. Not a bad move by Neil Craig, because this guy is a very, very good overhead mark. 
and has some 127 grabs for the season. Right up to the forward line, Tyson off hands. And he puts through a late goal, his second. So they're not done with, we're not even 17 minutes. Well, Michael, can they kick three goals in 10 minutes? Well, yes, they can, but you would go on current form that they wouldn't, particularly with the defence of Port Adelaide. See, wouldn't it be a great victory if they did? Well, that's a lucky goal, one would say. It's just no one's grabbed it. It's really fallen in his hands, so they really haven't produced anything. 17 goals in this match, 10 to Port Adelaide. Seven to the Red Legs. We're 17 and a half minutes into the final term. Red, Le Red Leg fans urging their team on. Port Adelaide fans reckon they've got this one won. But it's finals football. Primus high over the top. They need a quick one. They need Macca. They just need God to give them something. <laughs> At least Norwood's version of God, it's isn't he? Fair call. He well, is he is. to uh, the Red Legs what uh, Gary Ablett is to, to Geelong. And don't forget the McGarry Medal Live. Tuesday the 12th of September at 8.30pm, South Australian viewers only. The uh, night of nights for South Australian football, the McGarry medal night. McIntosh, a favourite for the medal. Over the top of it, Poole and Cowan. And what's that? A free kick. Daryl Poole is a very underrated player. Yes, he is. Has performed superbly over the last couple of months for Port Adelaide. Cowan looks to give it off to Macca. They look for him, don't they? All the time in tight positions. Fleming was pushed off the ball beautifully by Fiaci. He's a wonderful player in the back pocket. Well, he's taken three grabs against opponents that are a good six inches taller than him in this last turn. Northeast, 19 possessions from half back. Fairly effective as always. Malakellis thumps it up, sets it up for a screamer. No one's really there to be able to do that. Too many there. Robran pushes it forward. Gets it within 40 to 45 metres, but there's nothing happening. 10, 12 to 7, 13. Nearly 19 minutes have gone. If Norwood can get a goal here, Triggy, they'd only be 11 points down. They're doing it tough, though, aren't they? They haven't done it cleanly all day. As Jonathan Ross comes on for Primus. Russell around the body. Fiacci kept a play on it, kept it in front, did it well. Malakellis right on the boundary line. Irvin. Gets bundled over. In fact, he's gone for a throw. So Rowan Smith goes right across the face of goals. In fact, into the face of goals. Gets Ambrose. The Ambrose kick is well weighted and picks up Michael Wilson inside half back. The only player on option is Lees, and it finds him beautifully. Lees plays it on. Port Adelaide are doing it on the bit at the moment. Maynard off break, a tough one. Got past the outside of the bat. Quick one. Inside 50. Darren Smith is there. Jonathan Ross is there. Not quite this time. As Clements takes it. Gets a handball away. Port player went down and gets a free kick. And it's West. And Cowan can't believe it. Just feel the pain. <laughs> well, directly in front of goal. Let's have a look at it. Clements with the ball. Well, we just miss it, but he's put it through. He's got his third. So Robbie West with uh, three goals, three by the way. He's just peppered him in the second half. When Port Adelaide have needed him, he really has come to the fore. And he's been in spectacular form. Yeah, he certainly has. He's been one of Port Adelaide's best, along with Mela Kellis. And you could nearly go through the whole back line. Well, we might ask you about best players in a few moments, Michael, if you give it some thought. And uh, we can look for Norwood's best players as well. The Bombers by 19 points over West Coast. So two have done well so far in the AFL this weekend. North Melbourne and the Bombers. Dan Tokia on the up. Gave it to Cowan. There's nothing going though because Porter crashing in in numbers. Rowan Smith right up there towards Stephen Williams. Not this time. Tripped and in the back but not this time for Waterhouse. Malakellis across the top. West once again around the body. I think he's got another one. He has. Four for West and the Magpies rejoice. Once again, Melakellis and West combine. But it's interesting to see how easy Melakellis actually falls on the ground and is able to get up and set up the goal. And in the end, well, it was just a miraculous goal from Rob West. Good goal since, wasn't it?
He's been a terrific player. Probably Port Adelaide's best player this afternoon. He has four goals, three at the bounce. It's Port Adelaide 12-12 to the Red Legs 7-13. Primus wins it. It comes to McIntosh. He's taken high, but the advantage allowed to flow as Harvey streams through half forward, handballs it forward. Fleming overran it. Fiatchi's been brutal in the final term. He's just done everything right for Port Adelaide. And he truly is the big occasion player. George will be looking for a bit of a stint, I, I think, in the AFL. I reckon he'll be looking to have a shot at the goal shortly. <laughs> this is about when George just goes floating off down the field and he says, I'll bag a couple. Port by 29 points. Northeast from the pack to Jonathan Ross and his contest with Mead. Gets behind Mead to Harvey. The spare one is James. A big outing for him on his centre wing. He's picked up 34 possessions, but that one's been short-circuited. Well, not enough it was actually short-circuited, or Nathan Irving just didn't go for it. No, I think uh, Fiatti was terrific. Geneva, Maynard. And speaking of a volume of possessions, Maynard's also been outstanding. Northeast tried to put the pressure on. Kim Russell inside half forward. And that's a better take by Chris Prime. Well, they needed that earlier, didn't they? He's capable of it, he can do that, and he's so strong. Well, when you have a look at the stats, I wouldn't think there'd be more than a handful of Norwood forwards who've taken a big mark and able to have a shot for goal. Mark number four for Prime, six kicks, one handball. Fairly deliberate, the big tractor. Good-looking kick. And what's he done with it? It's pretty close. The umpire's going to walk back in and say it's a point, so he's missed out. But you're talking about key forwards. The only key forward for Norwood to kick a score is one goal by Ashley Reid in the third term. All the others have come from runners. For Port Adelaide, Hodges has one, and all the others have come from runners. It's a unique day out. This is Geneva. I've described him before as the alarm bell. Whenever they need him, he rings, chimes in, and does the trick. It's going to be a very important player before this final series is out. We can look forward seemingly now to Port Adelaide taking on the Dogs next week. And Norwood will tackle North Adelaide to be given the right to keep going. Maynard squeezes it out. Has a look now at Russell and inside 50 metres doing battle down there is Prime and he's taken a good one. Too little too late maybe. Well it's a good grab in the end. Good body strength. But uh, exactly right. Too little too late. The old tractor, he's only had some eight touches for the day and kicked four behinds. And a lot of those, if not all of them, have been set shots. Didn't look all comfortable with the, the kick. And he's got it. Well, finally, they get a key forward who can get amongst the action, but at the 24-minute uh, and 50-second mark of the last term, it is too late. Again, Maynard, that was a beautiful give. Jonathan Ross will be better for the outing. Great give by Maynard that set that up. Maybe a confidence booster for next week. For Chris Prime, one goal, four. He's been inaccurate. I just wonder the result of this game, and he kicked four, one. Well, what ifs don't count. Oh, that's a beautiful knock. Lee just thumps it. You can see the, and feel the magpie power growing. Excuse the pun. Wasn't intended. But the confidence growing. Maynard wide. And this is Roger James. 34 possessions in a uh, qualifying final. Would stamp a rookie as a class act, and he's done that. McCormick has come back from what appears to be a broken uh, nose. And drives it forward. And Fiatchi again. Now, how does he do that? What judgment? Well, what ripping judgment? That's exactly what it is. He just pushes the player under the ball. And if you're a coach, you would be going berserk. Glacier, I'm going off to the boundary line to get my interview organised. I'll leave you with it. And, Do that. Uh, the Port Adelaide, I'd just love to hear what Port Adelaide say about the intensity of the Red Leagues. Just over 26 minutes have gone in this last term. The lights are on at the park. Just about gone out on Norwood, though. Shoveled forward, Anderson, reasonably quiet, really, by his own standards. West has been far from quiet. Stephen Williams, northeast. His distribution goes wide. 
and they hug the boundary line on the far side. Darren Smith just manages to keep it in play. No, finally it runs over. So just over 25,000 people in front of Jack Cale's Magpies. Well, they've enjoyed a good outing, and Jack's shooting at Premiership number 10 to get him into double figures. That wouldn't be a bad sort of a career, would it? Would be very contented, Jack Cale. And number 10, well, his record's on the board now. Beats me why he looks so old. Beats me why he looks so old. Well, there's no doubt that this coaching caper would uh, drive you to nearly insanity. To be fair, I guess when you get old, you're allowed to look old, aren't you? Unless anyway, a, yeah. caught by 22 points. He'd have to be happy with this, though, because he's going to get a crack at the top dog next week. Central District just finished half a game ahead in terms of the minor round premiership. I know they're going to have their hands full next week. They will have watched this one very intently. 27 and a half minutes into the last term. Darren Smith will do battle with slightly disinterested player there and Matthew Robin, but they work it out with a series of handballs. Clements across the top. Thiessen could have turned around or used the runner. The runner is Russell and he has a look at the northern end and kicks it. So Kim Russell gets his first and Norwood in the dying stages of the qualifying final and get their ninth. 12-12 to 9-14. Kim Russell's been a pretty good recruit for Nord. Spent a bit of time with Collingwood. McIntosh involved in this, and we say he's had a pretty poor day. He hasn't really controlled things, but really does do a lot with his possessions. Clements, a good handball to Tyson, and just as easy as you like, puts it through. So back in the centre. And the Magpies are in control. 28 and a half minutes have elapsed. Pretty much close to full strength, the Pies. And aren't they showing it? Anderson hands off to Malakellis, who with all the time in the world, pops it right up in the air. Jonathan Ross is underneath it. The spoil came late, perhaps too high, but the umpire's now letting it play on. Ginova, he's going to have a couple of sore spots tonight. He's earned this one, though. He's going to get a free kick at 51 metres out. Well, he's been a great skipper since taking over from Greg Phillips. A great player for the Port Adelaide Footy Club and similar to McIntosh and Gurdham you just need those leaders short pass to Mead didn't come off but I agree with you his leadership is outstanding and none better in terms of that demonstration than last year's grand final when somehow he managed to lift his magpie outfit from the ground Darren Smith's got it and he's about 45 meters out Darren Smith what's he done so far well Two goals to Rowan Smith, but Darren Smith has gone goalless. Just the one behind. A reasonable game has provided a competition through half forward. And a chance now to put a little bit of icing on the chocolate cake. Away he goes towards the southern end from the side of the boot, though. And as the siren goes, that ball's gone out of bounds in the full. They won't care about it whatsoever, Port Adelaide, because at 12-12 to 9-14, they've run out very comfortable 16-point winners over a disappointing red leg side, Michael. Well, it was in the end, Stephen, and uh, Port Adelaide, well, they can be very, very satisfied with their effort today. As we see the players link arms, and none better than Miller Kellis, Rob West, go through their back line. Paul Northeast was very good. Stephen Carter was very good. Brian Lees again pro provided plenty of rebound. On the other hand, Nord, a dejected unit walking off the ground and having a look at some of their better players. Rodney Maydard was exceptional in defence. They didn't have any forwards. Stephen Daniels for a youngster in only his 17th, 18th game really did play exceptionally well. Craig Baum coming on didn't have to do much, didn't have the opportunity. Dale Fleming early has had a great year at half back. Roger James again for the amount of possessions that Roger James had today really was you can look at 20 kicks and 15 handballs. So it's been very good. 